Okay, this is uh, The Molecular Basis of Cancer by edited by William B. Coleman and Gregory J. Songalis. And uh, the uh, ISBN number on that is right here. Zero dash eight nine six zero three dash six three zero. Get that all in there. Zero dash eight nine six zero three dash six three four dash zero. That's the ISBN number. So I'm gonna be doing a review on it, so uh. Wanted to uh, let you have that. And then here's the uh, information on the authors, or on the editors, that is. Well, what has happened to my, not showing up very good. Okay, well, it's uh, William B. Coleman, Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine, University of North Carolina Sc School of Medicine, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and Gregory J. Sangales, Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine, Hartford Hospital, Hartford, Connecticut, put out by Humana Press, Totawa, New Jersey. Okay, uh, and uh, it starts out in the preface, the practice of medical oncology is in a period of significant positive change that owes primarily to advances in the basic science of oncology. In recent years, developments in molecular biology techniques have substantially increased our ability to detect and characterize genetic defects in human cells, resulting in significant increases in our understanding of the normal molecular mechanisms controlling cellular proliferation and differentiation. The advancement of our comprehensions of these basic molecular mechanisms has been paralleled by comparable increases in our understanding of the molecular basis of the processes involved in neoplastic transformation and tumoral genesis. Tumor, uh, tumor genesis. Information gleaned from studies conducted in basic molecular research laboratories is being applied with unprecedented speed to the development of new molecular tests for cancer diagnosis and prediction of clinical outcome, as well as to the development of new strategies for cancer prevention and treatment. Both basic scientists, clinical scientists and physicians have a need for a source of information on the current state of the art of molecular biology of human neoplastic diseases. In this volume on the molecular basis of human cancer, we attempt to provide such a source of current information as well as provide a look to the future of the discipline and the potential impact of scientific advances on the practice of medical oncology. The book is directly directed primarily to advanced graduate students and medical students, postdoctoral trainees and established investigators having basic research interest in the molecular basis of human neoplastic disease. However, it is also well suited for the non-expert with similar interest because it provides a broad interview of general themes in the molecular biology of cancer. To be sure, our understanding of the many processes of neoplasia and their molecular basis is far from complete, but few areas of thematic or conceptual consensus have developed. We have made an effort to integrate accepted principles 
with a current and comprehensive view of the molecular basis of human cancer. We hope that the molecular basis of human cancer will accomplish its purpose of providing students and researchers who already possess strong but diverse basic science backgrounds with unifying concepts so as to stimulate new research aimed at furthering our understanding of neoplastic disease. Uh, William P. Coleman, Gregory J. Songalis. And of course, neoplastic diseases, cancerous diseases, those that metastasize. <clears throat> and uh, they have uh, about let's see, seven, eight sections. Eight sections, 24 chapters. Part one, introduction. Part two, essential concepts of molecular biology. Part three, molecular themes and oncogenesis. Uh, part four, mechanisms of mutation. Part five, etiology of human cancers. Part six, human tumor systems. And part seven, future directions. Chapter one, cancer epidemiology. Uh, chapter one, cancer epidemiology. Epidemiology. I'll get it right in a minute. Cancer epidemiology, incidence and etiology of human neoplasms. And uh, chapter two, essential concepts and techniques in molecular biology. And chapter three, cancer genes. Chapter four, positive mediators of cell proliferation and neoplastic transformation. Chapter five, inactivation of negative growth regulators during neoplastic transformation. Chapter six, the role of genomic instability in the development of human cancers. Chapter seven, chromosomes and chromosomal instability in human cancer. Chapter eight, hereditary cancer. Chapter nine, evolution of research in cancer etiology. Chapter 10, cellular responses to chemical carcinogens. And uh, chapter 11, physical agents in human carcinogenesis. Chapter 12, Vital Mechanisms of Human Carcinogenesis. Chapter 13, The Molecular Biology of Colorectal Carcinoma. Chapter 14, Molecular Genetic Alterations in Primary Hepatocellular Neoplasms. Chapter 15, The Molecular Basis of Breast Carcinogenesis. Uh, chapter 16, The Molecular Basis of Prostate, of Prostate Carcinogenesis. Chapter 17, The Molecular Basis of Lung Carcinogenesis. Chapter 18, The Molecular Basis of Skin Carcinogenesis. Chapter 19, The Molecular Basis of Leukemias. Chapter 20, Molecular Genetic Application to the Diagnosis of Non-Hopkins Lymphoma. Chapter 21, Cancer Genetic Counseling. Chapter 22, Molecular Genetic Diagnosis of Inherited Cancer Predisposition. Chapter 23, Novel Molecular Targets for Cancer Drug Discovery. And Chapter 24, Gene Therapy and the Treatment of Human Cancer. And... Uh, it's got, it's not as large as a lot of medical books. It only has 588, 588 pages, but they're, they're large pages. They're 11, uh, they're uh, 10 and a half by eight and a half pages. And uh, on, cancer epi, epi, on cancer epidemiology, epidemiology, why is that so hard? Why am I messing up on that? It's pretty easy. Epidemiology, cancer epidemiology, incidence and etiology of human neoplasms by William B. Coleman, Ph.D. and Gregory J. Songalis, Ph.D. Cancer does not represent a single disease. <laughs> that right there is the number one thing you need to remember is that it doesn't represent a single disease. There's uh, uh, thousands and thousands of different things that uh, come under that. Uh, a lot of it's caused by some of the same same things, but it's not one single disease. And uh, a lot of times we mistake that as being a single disease. And actually, it's just a, a grouping of a whole lot of different uh, ailments, which... Uh, many of which they did not have a cure for or did not understand, so they lumped them all under cancer. Cancer does not represent a single disease. Rather, cancer is a myriad collection of diseases with as many different manifestations as there are tissues and cell types in the human body. 
involving innumerable endogenesis or exogenesis carcinogenic agents and various ideological mechanisms. What all of these disease states share in common are certain biological properties of the cells that compose the tumors, including unregulated or clonal cell growth, impaired cellular, cellular differentiation, inv invasiveness, and metastatic potential. It is now recognized that cancer in its simplest form is a genetic disease or more precisely a disease of abnormal gene expressions. Recent research efforts have revealed that different forms of cancer share common molecular mechanisms governing, un governing uncontrolled cellular proliferation, involving loss, mutation, or dysregulation of genes that positively and negatively regulate cell proliferation, migration, and differentiation, generally classified as pro proto oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. See, that's two classifications, proto oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. Essential to any discussion of the molecular mechanisms that govern disease pathogenesis for specific cancers is an appreciation for the distribution of these diseases among world populations with considerations of specific risk factors and ideological agents involved in disease causation. This introduction will describe cancer incidence and mortality for the major forms of human cancer and will briefly review some of the known risk factors and or causes of these cancers for specific at-risk populations. Cancer incidence and mortality. Cancer is an important public health concern in the United States and worldwide. Owing to the lack of nationwide cancer registries for all countries, the exact numbers of the various forms of cancer occurring in the world population are unknown. Nevertheless, estimations of cancer incidence and mortality are generated in an annual basis by several domestic and world organizations. Now, this is very interesting. Estimations of cancer incidence and mortality for the United States are provided annually by the American Cancer Society, ACS, and the National Cancer Institute's Surveillance, Epidemi Epidemiology, and in Results program, acronym SEER. Global cancer statistics are provided by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, acronym. I love acronyms. IARC, ACS, SEER, and one more, and the World Health Organization, WHO, or WHO. That good old World Health Organization, WHO, Monitoring of long-range trends in cancer incidence and mortality among different populations is important for investigations of cancer etiology. Given the long latency for formation of a clinically detectable neoplasm up to 20 to 30 years following initiation of the carcinogenesis process, uh, the carcinogenic process, exposure, which is, well, we'll start over with that because uh, they got some parentheses in there, which, given the long latency for formation of a clinically detectable neoplasm, parentheses, which will be up to 20 to 30 years in parentheses, following initiation of the carcinogenic process, parentheses, which means exposure to carcinogenic agent. Current trends in cancer incidence probably reflect exposures that occurred many years and possibly decades before. Thus, correlative analysis of current trends in cancer incidence with recent trends in occupational, habitual, and environmental exposures to known or suspect carcinogens can provide clues to cancer etiology.
Oh, dear me.